Hey everybody, welcome to the Real United States. Welcome back to our kitchen. And I wanted to do something, I don't know, just a little different. Um, there are numerous kinds of eggs beyond chicken eggs. Now chicken eggs is, is the, by far, the predominant commodity purchased and consumed here in the United States. However, it is not the only kind of egg available. Now, the, the trick is that most of these, these other eggs I'm going to show you come from uh, ethnic grocery stores. So what we've got here is a dozen and a half grade A large white chicken eggs. That's your standard large chicken eggs that we're all familiar with here in the United States, of course, and around the world. Bev and I happen to really like the brown eggs. They don't really taste any different. Uh, we just got used to them. We had the chickens. Some of you will remember. This is actually an extra large brown egg. These are laid by probably New Hampshire Reds is the type of chicken that lays these, and that's why they have a brown shell. Not a big deal. Also, you can find these. They're ubiquitous. You can find them in almost every grocery store in America. Now, one of the things that Bev and I like are at least I like some of this, is, um, well, one of the things we both like is quail eggs. Now, these you have to go to an Asian grocer to find. Uh, we bought these at a store called Lote um, here in the greater Washington, D.C. area. You can find them in most of the other Asian grocers, pretty much in any major metropolitan area in America. Now these are tiny, and they're also very fragile, by the way, folks. But you see that's a, you know, it's got a brown spotted, kind of a tan shell with brown spots on it. This is a typical quail egg, and compared to, say, the regular large white egg you see, it is substantially smaller. It's probably about a quarter of the volume, maybe a fifth or a sixth of the volume. And you might be asking yourself, well, why would I, why would I even want to bother with that? Well, and what does it taste like? I know is on some of your minds. This tastes very much like a chicken egg. I, I personally can not really distinguish any significant difference in taste. These are nice as a garnish. Now, one of the dishes that I used to make um, is a pan-fried slice of abalone and then I would garnish this with a fried quail egg. It just, it just looks nice and, and, the, and the tastes, you know, pair nicely. Also, if you were making some kind of a petite steak, uh, perhaps even like a filet mignon or something like that, um, it, it, you know, eggs go nice with beef and it makes a nice garnish. It just looks nice. It's a nice conversation piece. Even if you're just doing it for your, your spouse or your significant other or whatever, it's, uh, it just looks nice. It's a nice presentation, and it's kind of a nice little flavor pairing. Now, one of the things that I like that, and I don't know really why I'm sharing you uh, our personal likes and dislikes. Beverly doesn't care for these, but I do. And these are um, duck eggs. Now, duck eggs do taste a little different. <laughs> Depending on who you ask, you know, opinions are a very personal thing. I've heard them described as gamey. I'm not even sure what gamey means, but they have a much stronger taste. And they're big. Here's our same chicken egg again, and you can see side by side it is significantly bigger than a chicken egg. Um, now, much like chicken eggs, the color of the yolk is going to vary some depending on the diet of the bird. But these are generally a much darker yolk. They're more along an orange kind of a line than a yellow. Um, and yellow usually comes from being corn fed. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna fry one of each of these to show you how they compare size-wise and, and looks. They all cook pretty much the same. Now the quail egg also, and I'm not gonna do that in this episode, but these can be, well, any of these can be hard boiled, but the quail egg uh, in particular is used in a hard boiled whole fashion 
in uh, one of the Vietnamese soups called Nam Vang, and it is then put into this pork broth, and it's just cute as can be. Uh, we will probably pull that off in a future episode, but uh, I'm not going to do the hard-boiled eggs today, but any of these can be hard-boiled, you know, just the same as a chicken egg. So let me get my pan going. And it'll take just a second to get it up to temp. A little bit of olive oil so it doesn't stick to the bottom of my cast iron pan. And most of you who've been with us a while know that I do like cast iron because it gives a nice even heat. Just get that warmed up. I'm not going to do anything fancy. Again, this is just to show you basically the difference in the, in the size and maybe a little bit in the color. Because we don't have taste division, folks, so I can't, you know, I can't serve you a portion of this, however much I wish I could. <laughs> anyway, um, but like I say, the duck eggs, duck eggs have a very strong flavor. Um, strong egg flavor. I mean, they taste like eggs. There's nothing really different about them. It's just a lot more bold, if you can imagine that, you know. Like if you took the flavor of egg and concentrated it, that's what it would be like. To some people that seems foreign. Um, so it, it's like you've got this idea in your head about what egg should be like and then this is different. So it's, there's wrong, something wrong. Not wrong, it's just, it's just different. Uh, a problem we all have with, with a lot of foods that we try to draw comparisons to. Um, the classic one is venison. You know, anybody ever tells you venison tastes like beef, they're, they're mistaken. Venison tastes like venison. But they're trying to have something as a frame of reference, and that is not a good frame of reference. And that's why when people experience venison the first time, if they've been told it tastes like beef, it tastes bad to them because it's like, well, no, this doesn't taste like beef. Something's wrong with it, and it's not. It tastes different. So the duck egg, yeah, it's going to taste a little different, but it still tastes essentially like egg. Okay, let me start with my regular large egg. And I'm going to crank this down now that the pan is hot. And there's a large white chicken egg. Now we're going to compare that. Now, <laughs> I hope I can do this. Because this is, again, very delicate. And I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way, but these are a little difficult to open. Because the shell is delicate. But you can see, again, less than a quarter of the volume, but very similar in color. I mean, other than that, it looks like an egg. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead, and this is our, our duck egg. And I don't do this every day, so it's uh, you know, kind of a an adventure onto itself to do this on camera when, you know, I don't do it all the time. And you see that has a very large yolk. And, but essentially in this one, whatever the bird's been fed, it's the same color. It's this very nice golden yellow. And other than that, it's not too much different. Now sometimes, like I say, duck eggs, and it's probably because of differences in the diet, will end up being very orange. This one is not, these aren't, so these are probably corn-fed waterfowl. But that's fine. And that, that may affect the, the, the flavor a little bit. Um, certainly for those of you who have a very sensitive palate, you may notice a difference. But I wanted to cook these all in the same pan to give you some idea of the comparison of the sizes. Now one more note here. I like my eggs sunny side up. 
please don't write in and give me a lecture about salmonella. I don't want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> so if you don't like sunny side eggs, up eggs, that's fine. Flip them over, scramble them, doesn't matter. You do have to handle these quail eggs a little gingerly. See if I can get that under my cam here for the stove. This is my regular chicken egg, which is going a little squirrely on the, on the top there. And I'm going to give my duck egg just a little bit longer so that all of the white can cook. Because again, you've got a little bit more volume there. So at the same temperature, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook it through to the level that you want. Now I'm given to understand the same is true when you're hard boiling these. The volume is going to make a difference in how long you boil them. If you boil a chicken egg, what, 11 minutes? You're going to boil a duck egg maybe 12, 13 minutes. But a, a uh, quail egg, you're only going to boil about three to four minutes. There we go, that's it. I'm sure most all of you are familiar with a frying an egg and how long it takes. That's about all it takes. See if I can get these in front of the big camera. <clears throat> Give you some idea of the difference in the size. So you can see volumetrically this is, you know, maybe a quarter of the size of the chicken egg here where the duck egg is like twice the volume of the chicken egg. These uh, supposedly have some, some uh, qualities about them that are supposedly very good for your joints. Um, some of the things that you, know, you get from eggs, these have larger quantities of them. So I don't know if that's true, it's just something I saw while doing a little quick research for this episode. Anyway, they're a little more expensive. Well, actually they're quite a lot more expensive because they're not produced in mass quite the way chicken eggs are. So a half dozen uh, duck eggs is gonna be about five or six dollars. So you gotta really like duck eggs. Now, if you are going to go to the Asian grocer, be very, very careful when you're, you read the package because you don't want to end up with a salted duck egg or a fermented duck egg, which are very popular in uh, East Asian cultures and are sold at all Asian grocers. And if you like those, that's fine. But if you're expecting to get a raw duck egg, you want to make sure you look that you are buying just a regular duck egg, that it's not, you know, a, fermented egg or a salted egg or anything like that. Those are already solid inside the shell because of the processing that they've gone through. And boy howdy, they got some very, very distinctive tastes and, uh, and colors about them that are a little off-putting to Westerners, so be cautious of that. Uh, not so with the quail eggs, those are always going to be, as far as I know, I've never seen them any other way than a regular, fresh, quail egg, then these are domestic products. These are, you know, grown, if you will, produced here in the United States. All of these. So the, now, of course, we've also, although I don't have any because they're, they're relative, these are relatively hard to come by and that's goose eggs, which are larger still than the duck egg. They're big. Uh, last time I bought one, they were like $10 an egg. They are beaucoup expensive because again, they're, they're hard to produce in, in any kind of quantities. And so the farmers charge a premium for those people who want them. They taste to me and to Beverly, identical to a chicken egg, but it's like this gigantic chicken egg. I really like them, Beverly likes them. Uh, a little pricey, it's one of those things you get maybe, you know, when, you, when if you happen to see them, you get a few, a few, 
you get two <laughs> as a treat just because it's it's something fun to do but it's yeah it's not something you, at that price that you want to make a you know as a part of your diet <laughs> so anyway if you got questions or comments about eggs and their availability or whatever uh, I'd certainly like to hear them leave them down in the comments section below I love hearing from all of you just stop in say hi whatever I try to get back to everybody I can uh, if you're new here hey pick subscribe come along for the adventure because we got lots more to show you and as always thank you for watching